and we're live. Yay! Hello uh, to the 10 people. I think there's 10 people kicking around on the stream right now. Um, today we're doing the roof. Um, instead of being in the game today, I'm Elsa, by the way, um, I'm figuring out crocheting because we're doing something cool for the museum with crocheting soon, which I won't ruin the surprise. But everybody else is in there doing their thing with the roof. Um, does anybody want to chat about the building plan for today? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were initially, this was, as you can see on the screen, this is where we were initially going with the roof, but we decided that it is coming out a little steep. Um, so we're going to be swapping over to building out of slabs and shorten it down a little bit. Try to Great make idea. More, try to make it more uh, true to life. Do we have a reference photo to show people of the building we're recreating? Uh, somewhere. <laughs> Let's see. Just in case we have new viewers. Yeah, so that's a good point. Um, welcome everybody in case we have new viewers. Um, this is the Admiralty House Communications Museum Twitch stream, which we've been doing since we've been closed um, to keep everybody safe uh, from the COVID. Um, so today we're working on the roof, but the past couple of weeks we've been working on other things in Minecraft to rebuild the HM wireless station, um, which is the building which the museum exists in today. Over the history of the HM Wireless Station, it's been many things from a uh, naval reservist base, which is what it was when it was the HM Wireless Station, um, a farm, and even uh, the office building for NL Housing. So, um, through the past over the past couple of weeks, we did the towers, um, which you will see. I'm sure you will see at some point in time. Uh, we did the walls and the base of the HM wireless station. And we're not re recreating the museum as it was, we're recreating the wireless station, the historic wireless station. Uh, oh yeah, that's it right there. There we have it. Here, let me, let me do some, some doctoring with, uh, let me, let me scale that down a little bit. <laughs> I had to I had to go find it, download it, and then add it into OBS. Um, but yeah, so oh, this is beautiful. aerial shot of the of the station and photo credit to Clem Scott, I believe. Yes, yeah. it is beautiful. There's some photos that we have memorized because we use them so much. <laughs> I just love Clem Scott and all of his photos. Yeah, yeah. There's some really great photos in that collection. Um, if anybody's curious about those photos, uh, we have quite a few up on our Instagram and Facebook and Twitter if you want to go look at other museum photos. And links to those can all be found photos. links to those can be found on our uh, Twitch channel page. Um, yeah. So yeah, so Tyler, yep. if you want to come over to where I am, I stuck out a few different types of slabs, maybe, if we want to take a look and figure out which one we want to use. Oh, beautiful. Hmm. I like, this is my least favorite, so I'm axing that one. That's fair. I really like this far right one. Um, I think it looks very similar to, oh. like, shingles. That's what I was going for. I think that's the thing that I've found the trickiest with this so far is the fact that all the photos we have are black and white, you know, so there's no yeah. real sense of like, the roof shingles could have been purple. And I like <laughs> yeah. we do have some shingles in the collections room. Are they like OG shingles? Yeah, there's some siding. Yeah, there's some shingles and siding from the original building in the collections room. So next time we're in there, maybe we'll take a photo and we'll try to figure that out for everybody and we can show a photo of it and um, try to recreate it as best as possible. But yeah, it would have been all shingles. 
I'm pulling up my phone now because I actually have photos of those shingles in my phone. Oh, do you? Wicked. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's our Tim. Always prepared. Is that well, the... No, but I was do... Oh, sorry. I was yeah. doing an artsy poster <laughs> thing and I wanted some background and I was like... Yeah, no, I think we got the right brick. Beautiful. Is that the polished blackstone brick slab or the deep slate tile slab? Polished blackstone brick slab. Okay, perfect. That's what I thought, but... Um, yeah, we have some of this stuff in the collections room, so like next time we're in there we can go in and like take some photos and we can show everybody who's on here. Um, so, I don't think we introduced ourselves yet, which is something that we usually do on this thingy. Um, I'm Elsa. I'm not actually in the game today, but I am here talking a whole pile. Um, I am the museum manager um, at Admiralty House. Um, and... Tim. Sure, yes. Hello. I'm Tim. <laughs> I am... <laughs> Kind of a man who wears many hats at the museum in terms of like, I do community relations and I also do event planning and also I do research. And Don't also I just do the randomest, randomest things. Yeah, like we're crocheting now and knitting. And playing Minecraft. And playing Minecraft. Um, Tyler. Hello, I'm Tyler. I also, I, I think all of us kind of wear many hats at the museum. Um, I, nature of a small museum. I do, I do research. I do um, pretty much all of the IT stuff. I set up everything for the Twitch and organize all of that stuff. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. Juliana. Yeah, I'm Juliana. I am the somewhat new collections manager. Um, and at the moment, I'm working on a virtual tour that should be done tomorrow. So, yay! We'll have that out soon. That's exciting. Um, that is really exciting. It looks so good so far as a teaser for everybody. Um, and I'm really excited for people to be able to see it. And I'm really excited too because, like, if we do anything to the museum, then there's still a record of what it used to look like now, which is cool and a historic thing in itself. Neat. Totally. Uh, yeah, so Roof, um, should we talk about what we're working on for um, the crocheting and knitting that we've we've sort of been talking about? I actually have a teaser post ready to go up tomorrow about oh, it. So exciting! But so do you want... I am not telling people what it is. I literally just have a photo that is going up. <laughs> okay, so we... A secret background hint in it. We won't spoil the surprise now then. But we are working on a, a project that combines a cool craft with communications technology. Is that a good way of putting it? I think so. <laughs> I Something that I love about it is what, what I would call like a stealth educational opportunity. Like it's a great way of hiding something that is actually educational in something that you wouldn't normally think of. Yeah, you yeah, know, I like agree. How really cool. you want like a conversation starter in your house so you put up like a weird painting for people to ask questions about or something like that. I think that's what it is. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's different looking. And then you can be like, yeah, actually, because... And then, boom, start the conversation. Yeah. Perfect. Very apt um, description of this project. Speaking of weird art in your house, did anybody have weird art in their houses? Nobody? Mm. Well, I have, I don't know if I'd call it, we I mean, most people would probably call it weird, um, but I have an artist friend uh, that I've known for a very long time, um, and I have one of her art prints that is definitely not traditional art, <laughs> um, if you could say that. 
Um, curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I just really like, and this has nothing to do with what you just said or funny art on our walls. Um, but I just really like the intersections of art and history and crafts and whatever else. And I think it's cool when you can do that stuff to do education programs or, or whatever else. It's fun. Yeah, for sure. And we got a new follower. Um, Thank you for following. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things we have in our home uh, is a funny, I guess it's a poster, um, but also art, I guess. Um, I think our staff talked about this before, but a few of us really like Clone High. <laughs> um, and uh, we have a poster with all the people who, saw, who worked on Clone High signed it, and it's a Lego movie poster. But they also did the Lego movie, so it's not weird. So we have a question, and I'll do a refresh now since there's probably new people in here. Um, welcome to the Admiralty House Communications Museum Twitch stream. That's hard to say. Um, so I'm Elsa, I'm the museum manager, and today we're on our third stream, I believe? Yes, this is our third stream. We're on our third stream of building the HM Wireless Station, uh, which is the building where the museum lives today. But originally it was a naval base um, during the First World War. So here we are now, um, building it. Uh, it's been many things over the years. Outside of it being, you know, a naval base, it became a farm. It was the uh, office for NL Housing. <laughs> um, and now it's a museum. And this is our 25th anniversary uh, as a museum, too, which is super cool. Um, and very exciting for us because we're going to, as soon as we can get back to the office, we're going to start planning some fun things um, for people to engage with us. Very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. I never realized I just how complicated the actual roof is until I looked at this photo and just went, oh my god. Yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be, it, it's it's very shapely. <laughs> yeah, I guess like building the roof in this is like a little complicated. A little bit, but we'll get it. You will. I believe in you. Thanks, Paul. I can't wait to like take my little Minecraft guy and walk through it. I know, that's going to be really cool. I'm, I'm excited <laughs> for that. Like, I enjoy the process of building, but I'm also excited to be done, strictly for the fact of, you know, getting to actually walk through it. Yeah. Just excited to be done. <laughs> <laughs> I love my job, not. I promise. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're up to here. Um, over the past couple weeks, yeah, we did the towers. We did... The base of the museum, and the base of the museum, there's a photo of it on um, our Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, so you can see what, you know, the progress that we've we've gone through so far of building this thing. And then hopefully, eventually, we can offer this to people to look at themselves, and they can come through and walk through on their own and whatever else. When we're finished building the museum, when we're, we're finished building the wireless station, I guess we'll probably have to try to build... Or when we're finished building this part of the wireless station, are we going to try to build the other piece of the wireless station? So, I've been doing a little bit of research on that. So you'll notice, I don't know if you can just perfectly recall the photo from Clem Scott that we showed you, like, ten minutes ago. Or I could just pull but, it back up. Uh, it's all right, if, if you don't mind. Uh -huh. um, but oh. you do not have to. There um, we go. You'll notice that, like, we're building the building on the left. You know, there's a whole other building, um, and that was known as, I believe it was the Transmission Building, and I am researching, trying to find out what the inside of it looked like. Yeah. We have lots of photos from inside the base that could have been from inside either building, but we can't really guarantee which one was from which. Yeah. Um, that's the thing about top-secret military bases, is they tend not <laughs> to, like, publish the blueprint for how they were made. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the, yeah, I, I think it's really interesting that like we have all these photos when it was top secret too, but I guess it was like people who were in the loop and in the know. Um, I think we touched on it on a different stream, but we did talk about before how when they were about to start building, um, letters started pouring in for people to work there, even though it was top secret. Which I find fascinating. <laughs> I, do, I um, do love that little tidbit. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like me looking for jobs before I was employed. Just calling everybody. <laughs> <laughs> looking everywhere. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, yeah, that's right. The power of the Newfoundland word of mouth. True. Um, so a little bit more about the station itself. This... The location where it is in Mount Pearl today, which is 365 Old Placentia Road, if you want to visit us, I feel like we'll probably open up at the end of February. Can't promise anything. Um, but we'll open back up at the end of February. Um, the reason why they chose that location out in Mount Pearl uh, was because it was first one, uh, the same elevation or similar elevation as Signal Hill. Um, and two, it was still close enough to the ocean, but far enough away where you could hide all of those big, huge towers, um, as I'm sure you've seen a little bit of in the stream, and you can see some in the background most of the time. Um, I'll, give us a good, and, I'll give us a good aerial shot. Yeah, so those towers are huge. So you didn't really want people going past, watching or seeing them. So uh, it was chosen for that reason as well. Um, great question. Does the museum have a basement? Um, I don't believe it does. It sounds like it does in some places. Um, but from pictures, I think it just has like a, a, a base, like a, I don't think that it has a, a full basement. It certainly has a very scary attic. It has two very scary attics. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, the second attic. Yeah, the one that I had to climb into. <laughs> Who wants that? The second attic. <gasps> We went up there because there was a, a tale of there being a Christmas tree up there. Um, so I sent, uh, I sent, you know, the staff up there, and there <laughs> was a Christmas tree. Along um, with many, 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 many dead bugs. <laughs> yeah, lots of dead bugs. Like a concerning <laughs> amount of dead bugs. Carpenter ants are not good for museums. They eat stuff. and Anyway, so... Uh, not a good scene up there, um, but if anybody wants it to be their office. Sure, why not? <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh. Um, and yeah, there is also a ghost. Does anybody want to talk about Mr. Candy? Creepiest possible name for a ghost. Yeah, <laughs> my brother said one time, um, he said he had, like, Henry Candy, who is the only person who died um at the museum or when it was the hm wireless station um he died of electrocution uh which is very scary very horrifying um he was only 21 years old and um i can't see the ghost being anybody else yeah i couldn't imagine yeah. who else it would be yeah um, he's, he's very friendly um never had any issues out of him yeah. Casper. Casper. <laughs> Have there been any stories of encounters? Um, no, I'm not sure, honestly. I don't think so. I've certainly heard, like, scary sounds and stuff, but it's also a very old building. Um, it is a designated heritage structure, so it is very old. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I guess, uh... We could try. We could try to, to get some encounters. <laughs> <laughs> I do, like, at the end of the day, if it's dark out when I'm leaving and if I'm there by myself, I run to the other end of the museum. Oh, that's that's not nice. I talk to him. I, uh, I'll, <laughs> especially if I'm turning out the, the lights in, like, the commanding officer's sitting room, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll wish him a good night and tell him that, uh, that I hope he had a good day. <laughs> <laughs> so my Tyler's the only one of us who's gonna get spared. Yeah. <laughs> I'm nice to him. I just run. I'm just, I'm just, you know, 
I do the same thing in my own home, like on the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> um, right. Seance at the museum. So, uh, years and years and years ago, there were people who did go in and like assess it, assess the museum for spiritual activity, and we do have a plaque certifying us. What what does it say again, Tim? I can't remember. Um, it's from the Newfoundland and Labrador Life After Death Society. Um, yeah. Which, that sounds really legit. But then they had this movement, this project that they ran, where they just went around and assessed places and made, like, a really <laughs> conscious effort. And they called that Project Ghost Bro, which, to me, just... You have lost all credibility. Like, I don't... <laughs> overly believe in ghosts that much personally but like you just lost what little bit of credibility i was willing to give you i don't know i, I think it's project ghost bro <laughs> hyphenated ghost bro Ugh, That's it. sorry uh, but they did name us a spiritually active location yeah um i have like a a weird thing with ghosts it's like i don't think i believe in ghosts but i still like run through the museum when it's dark. It's more yeah, better safe than sorry. <laughs> and also, like, I have worked on so many cemeteries and at so many, like, burial sites, like, all over the world. And if I were to be haunted, I would be haunted by now. <laughs> like, that's, that's it. But I have just, like, this irrational thing. Uh, where I still have to, like, run upstairs if it's dark, down the stairs, and I have to <laughs> run through the museum if it's dark in there. Um, I don't know if we have any new people coming into this conversation about how <laughs> much of a scaredy cat I am. Um, so That's I'm Elsa, I'm the, museum... <laughs> I'm the museum manager, and clearly very afraid of ghosts, but not sure if I believe in them. Um... And this is the Admiralty House Communications Museum Twitch stream. Uh, say that five times fast. Um, and today we're working on the roof of the HM Wireless Station. Uh, the HM Wireless Station is a designated heritage structure in Mount Pearl, uh, where our museum is today. And the HM Wireless Station was a naval base during the First World War. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're recreating the original base rather than what the museum looks like today because it did look different. And I think it's fun and historic to do experimental stuff like this and to engage with people through Minecraft. <laughs> so fun. I think it's a really neat like form of engagement. Yeah, yeah, it's cute. It's different and also like it's nice to do while we're away but i think we'll continue to do this maybe not weekly uh after we open but you know monthly or something we'll continue to work on this or open it up for other people to come on in and see it or i don't i don't know how you do that but when the time comes it'll happen we'll get something figured out yeah whoa 15 people hello everybody we're just coming along nicely yeah, the roof no. looks excellent. There's so much roof to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, something we talked about was Henry Candy, who is the only person known to have died at the museum, or well, at the yeah. HM Wireless. But a story we haven't talked about yet in any of our streams was the story of the guy who almost died at the HM Wireless yeah. station. Um, so... I don't know if you guys know the story or not, because I found it, like, in the back of the tour notes once, <laughs> was the story of the time when someone tried to assassinate the leading telegrapher at the museum, or at the HM Wireless. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I remember I remember glancing over that when I, uh, when I was reading through the tour notes. That's super, super cool and interesting. Um, so there's, why... there's a newspaper article about that, right? Is there? I remember I think, coming across it somewhere. Yeah, I think it's in the drive. I think you're right. Um, so, Tim, do you want to talk about it? Any other sure. Reasons? Um, so, basically, 
Uh, it was... Okay, Tim, rack your brain. August <laughs> 1918. I can't remember the exact day. It was late August, 26th or something. Anyways, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, August 1918. I know there was an attempt made by, and I think they call them persons unknown because there was actually multiple assailants. Mm -hmm. uh, and their objective was essentially to damage the building itself and the equipment there and then assassinate the leading telegrapher. Um, obviously the attempt failed. It didn't work. That's why we call it an attempt. Um, mm -hmm. But they never actually caught the person who headed it, orchestrated it, or really figured out why it was happening. Um, yeah. The only person who was ever actually named in any of the articles, his name was Joseph... Oh, come on. Joseph, Joseph, I believe it was Schnitzer. Mm-hmm. Sounds um, right. <laughs> who was, he was born in Jerusalem, but he was of German descent, I think. And then he moved to the United States on his way to Canada. Well, to Newfoundland, I should say, properly. Um, uh, he was the only person who was ever actually named as being one of the assailants. And they basically pulled him in interviewed him, told him, like, listen, we're gonna find the evidence, uh, and then he fled the country. <laughs> so, can we confirm that he was guilty? No, but also, mm, that's yeah. sus. <laughs> yeah, pretty suspicious. <laughs> that's really interesting, yeah. Um, much like the, uh, more folklore story about the, uh, snowbanks. Oh, which, were also built. I think those are here somewhere, right? Uh, no, I, I think they got torn down. <laughs> they torn um, down. One might be here somewhere. Let me <laughs> see if I can find it. So there's a, there's a story, uh, a folk tale, if you will, um, about uh, German soldiers during the First World War sneaking up on the HM wireless station and dressing as snowbanks. Uh, this most likely didn't happen. Um, and then apparently one of the uh, naval reservists who was uh, at the station uh, found him and beat the heck out of him, but there's no no, no real evidence for that. I'm going to tell myself that it did happen because it's fun. <laughs> it's pretty fun to think about. <laughs> like, it's really funny. They're not there anymore, so I'll just build one. <laughs> there we go. One time I decided... Oh, sorry. Snowbank. One time you decided what? <laughs> one time I got really bored and just decided I was like, we should do, like, Admiralty House-themed D&D one-shot things. And that was going to be one of them was the story of the snowbanks. And it was actually to cover up that it was going to be like an interdimensional supernatural occurrence. And they just made the story of the snowbanks to cover it up. That would be so fun. <laughs> that would be really fun. That is, that's what happens that. in my brain when you leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why Tim can't work from home. This lockdown is <laughs> going to be the most productive thing that ever happened to you. <laughs> yeah. Like fantasy writing, not just in life. In general. Locking me away so that no one can see my brain. Yeah. <laughs> Tortured genius. So it snows a lot in Minecraft, hey? So much. It's the biome we <laughs> picked. It's the biome I picked. It's my own fault. <laughs> um, speaking of which, are we still supposed to get that weather tomorrow? Uh, the weather statement is still standing, as far as I know. It's not I supposed to be as today. bad as people were hyping it up to be, because everyone was like, Snow in 2022, and it's like, guys, no. Please, no. <sighs> Please, no. Again. <laughs> I didn't get to experience it the first time. Oh, it's wild. Me neither. Yeah, Juliana. Sure. <laughs> Juliana. Jeez. Ju uh, Juliana and I want our turn with the snowmageddon. Uh, I've seen pretty crazy storms in Winnipeg too, though, so... 
Yeah, I was yeah, gonna say I they call it winter peg. Like, <laughs> well, I'm from Tennessee in the U.S., so I don't get snow. That's fair enough. We don't get any any amount of snow like the amount of snow you get in Newfoundland. Yeah, it's a weird climate because it's just like warm enough that it just snows all the time. Well, not all the time because clearly we don't really have snow at the moment. But yeah, today was actually really nice. It's all the time too, so. This was a weird year. Like, usually by this point, we're up to our eyeballs in snow. We have some really great photos on our um, social media channels, like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, too, of snow at the station. Those really high bank ones. Oh, yeah, those are really good. Yeah. I always use them really sparingly because I like breaking them out whenever the museum closes for, like, impending weather. <laughs> Oh, that's fair. Somebody says, uh, I was in Halifax for Snowmageddon and felt weird when I had to go to class when everyone I knew was snowed in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Snow day envy. Back home. I remember uh... having a weird experience of Snowmageddon because, like, I was out around the bay at the time. Yeah. Like, everyone in St. John's was in lockdown, and meanwhile, I'm just like, we're fine. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it wasn't great. Um, we have a huge plot of land in a massive driveway that I had to shovel by hand, but, like, in terms of not having to be, like, in lockdown for days. Yeah. It was actually really fun. It was really fun because it wasn't, like, the COVID lockdown. Like, everybody was out, like, snowshoeing or, like, walking around or like being just like being outdoors and doing stuff you could still like see your neighbors and things like that so it was like fun that sounds nice yeah it was nice um speaking of snow clearing the city of mount pearl has incredible snow clearing and that is where our museum is located um hashtag not sponsored <laughs> <laughs> well yes sponsored um but uh like i live in st john's and whenever i drive to work when we're in the building it's like i'm going through st john's and the snow clearing is like not done and i get to mount pearl and it's pristine it's gorgeous yeah it's yeah. the the difference is is definitely very wild because i also live in st john's yeah yeah. Um, oh, we got 15 people again. So here we are. I'll uh, do a little intro again. Uh, welcome to the Admiralty House Communications Museum Twitch stream. Uh, I'm Elsa. I'm the museum manager. Um, and I'm joined today by some of my colleagues uh, in Minecraft. Um, as you can see, they're hard at work um, building something. That something is the HM Wireless Station. The HM Wireless Station is where the museum is today. It's uh, the same building, has a lot of the same historic features, uh, but through history it's been many things. Um, the HM Wireless Station was originally built uh, during the First World War um, as a naval communications base and where the naval reservists lived um and protected the base uh so after that it was a farm it was the nl housing office many things and now a museum and this year is the museum's 25th anniversary so uh we've worked on many things over the past three weeks in minecraft um as you can probably see in the background we have towers and those would have been the original towers well, not obviously original in Minecraft, but similar to the original towers um, that were at the station for the communicating of the communication space. Um, so we can get an angle without the clouds in the way. There we go. They're so tall. And these towers were just shy of being as tall as the Statue of Liberty, which is very, very tall. Um, so, very tall towers. Uh, then we also worked on the base of the museum, the walls, and now we've hit the roof. And if you visit the museum, well, it's not a museum, 
then if you visit the Today Museum, you can still see some of the features, um, which is cool. You can look up and see some of the roof stuff and other things. It's all very cool. Um, so yeah, we're trying to recreate it as best as possible, but Minecraft obviously doesn't have a lot of the materials. Uh, it has an awful lot of materials, um, but some of them we've had to switch up a bit. Um, so the walls of the original station were built with a medieval building technique called waddle and daub, a very old technique. Uh, makes a really nice solid wall, which makes it really hard to get internet in the building um, today. Not so much back then, um, but it supposedly <laughs> it supposedly soundproofed it quite a bit. Um, so the building is decently soundproofed um, for all of the top secret communications that happened there because it was a top secret base, uh, despite so many people knowing about it. Um, so Waddle and Dob is uh, like bamboo and mud or some other kind of bonding thing. And what have we used here for the walls instead of uh, Waddle and Dog? <laughs> We've used bone. Oh! <laughs> so we used bone because of the way that it looks. Like, and it's just how it looked in the brick. Yeah, so like, we sort of figured that like the marrowy center is sort of like the bamboo and then the outside is, is the cement or the, the mud. Anyway, it doesn't actually work really well as a stand-in for it. It looks good for it anyway. Um, great, great solution to that problem. So, <laughs> um, so the building wasn't just, or the HM wireless station wasn't just one building as we see right now either. There was a second building as well. Um, the second building is not standing anymore, um, but I think we still might try to at least build the outline of it eventually. Yeah, there it is. Did that building burn down? I believe so. Um, it hasn't been there for a long time. Um, and since it has been gone, um, there was like a shed there that the city used to keep their like well I guess it wasn't a city in at the time in the early eighties but they used to keep their uh, Christmas parade floats in there. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. I did not know that, but that is hilarious. I love that. Yeah. And then today, what is in that spot is the annex, which is a space that we share with um, Association for the Arts in Mount Pearl. Um, and we partner with them a lot um, on a lot of cool things. Um, and there's temporary exhibits in that space. We do lectures in that space, uh, events, lots of things. Um, this summer, I'm particularly excited for our temporary exhibit, Punk Rock Pearl, about Mount Pearl's uh, contribution to punk rock in Newfoundland and Labrador. Very excited. I'm also very excited for that. Yeah, yeah I'm hyped. So hyped. And Can't we'll wait. have some content uh, from that exhibit on this channel too, right? Yeah, I think that we're going to start doing um, record collection tours um, of Mount Pearl punks and people who played in Mount Pearl punk bands. Um, just to show, you know, where things came from, what people are interested in at the time. Um, yeah. That's really cool. I'm really excited. Yeah, and we have a new blog post for Punk Rock Pearl coming out tomorrow as well uh, that Chris Hamlin wrote. Um, and it's going to be fun. Very exciting. I just think it's so weird that, like, I was in punk bands my whole life, and now I get to make an exhibit about it. <laughs> and it's amazing, like, how much punk there's been here. Yeah. And, and how early it was. Like, it started here in, like, what, 1977? Yeah, it was so early, because, like, there was, like, the slime um, on the go very early. Anyway, it's all very early, very cool, um, really big culture of it. And I think it just, like, I guess it sort of comes from, um, 
I guess, trying to be different than just doing folk or folky Newfoundland stuff or traditional Newfoundland music or whatever. Um, not that that's bad. I certainly like a lot of traditional Newfoundland music, but as a teenager, I it was my enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Good progress. Yeah, it's looking solid. Like I'm there. Mm. A plus, folks. Great job. Um, people in the chat, do you think that it would be fun if we built the sprung greenhouse? I just want Everybody. to talk about the sprung greenhouses all the time because it is, it's hilarious. Yes, and I have a video that I made a few weeks ago that's going to come out soon. I've just been trying to, for the museum, trying to balance the content because we've actually been like super active online since being closed. Also, for anyone who wants context as to how spooky it is uh, in the museum at night, uh, this is why <laughs> Elsa runs down the halls. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is very dark and it is it i will i will give you that it is extremely unsettling at night <laughs> surprise ah <laughs> i don't have my snowballs that sounds like don't a you problem <laughs> it is i don't remember where they are folks huh no throwing snowballs in the museum what's well, not a museum right now <laughs> That's true. You're not my real dad. It's a wireless communication station. That's something that I think about, like, what were the naval reservists up to when they weren't doing anything? Because, like, an awful lot, of, like, there were communications operators, radio operators, all of those people focusing on the communication stuff, but there were also reservists there. Um, and clearly they had free time. Um, like, what were they up to? In our little heating the call exhibit, um, I know that one thing they did was play sports. Yep. And yeah. quoted the, the ladies of Mount Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> I, think that, I think that was yeah. a major activity. And that was the beginning of the Mount Pearl curl, the feminine mating call. I'm making that up. That's not true. Um, I tried to convince people when we first closed. Um, for level four, uh, tried to convince Tim specifically to do a tutorial on how to do the Mount Pearl Curl. Um, and he never took me up on it. Just, I've never actually seen an <laughs> actual Mount Pearl Curl in person. Like, I've seen yeah. pictures. And I asked my dad about it. He's like, oh, ask your mother for pictures. She was the queen of the Mount Pearl Curl. But like, <laughs> I want to see photos of your mother with a Mount Pearl Curl. Oh, trust me, I've been asking. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need some I just light know here. if I approach one of my relatives to be like, I need to do a Mount Pearl Curl tutorial, they're going to wind up using my hair, and I'm not okay with that. <laughs> I wanted, I wanted you to have a Mount Pearl Curl. It's really <laughs> funny, because everyone who works at the museum has, like, pretty long hair. <laughs> So it could really be any one of us. Yeah, I was we gonna say Elsa's is probably the shortest. Yeah. Yeah. I think I could still probably have a Mount Pearl Curl though. I don't think it's uh it's that you don't you don't need much hair. Um yeah, uh, we have a question in the, we have a question in the chat. Is that like a hairstyle? Uh, would we be able to find a picture of a Mount Pearl Curl right now? I'd uh, be able to find a picture. I don't know if we'd be able to find a picture we can use. Yeah. If you search Mount Pearl Curl on the internet, you will find a Mount Pearl Curl. Specifically, years ago, there was a woman who went on Ellen DeGeneres. Harry? <laughs> yeah, and her Mount Pearl Curl was shown to the world. And really Ellen cool. loved her energy so much that she kind of became, like, a regular on the show. Yeah. <laughs> she sent her to, like, red carpets to interview people, like, the whole thing. 
But yeah, the Mount Pearl Curl, uh, this woman certainly had one. If you if you search her, you'll you'll find you'll search Mount Pearl Curl. It, she is probably the first photo to come up. I imagine. I think. Well, she definitely is. I tried to find photos, like reference photos, because I really, I do want to do a Mount Pearl Curl tutorial. It's just I want to make sure that it's accurate and right. <laughs> <laughs> Should we, like, get a wig for the museum and put it on display in the revamp? Only if we can put it on, you know, the mannequin head with the googly eyes? Oh, really scary please, one! Please, no. That thing's horrifying. I love him. I love him! <laughs> no! Um, yeah, we, uh, do you think that we should, uh, display the Mount Pearl Curl in the museum? Oh, absolutely we should. I feel like early Frosty Festival and Mount Pearl Curl perfectly coincide. I'm surprised there wasn't like an iteration of Frosty with a Mount Pearl Curl, honestly. Uh, there hasn't been one yet. Yeah. Um, Juliana, have you looked up the Mount Pearl Curl? Uh, yes, I've seen it. It's Excellent. impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very important part of Mount Pearl's heritage. <laughs> I knew about the Mount Pearl Curl like before I really knew about Mount Pearl as a child. Like my mom had a friend growing up who like started hanging out in Mount Pearl and she was like, yeah, she started having Mount Pearl, Pearl, Pearl Curl and then she was different. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. My mom, my, my parents are very St. John's. So St. John's. So center town, almost downtown. Um, so... That's why my mother would have said that about a nice person from Mount Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> and now I work in Mount Pearl. It's very interesting hearing about like the the location uh, based blood feuds, essentially. <laughs> Everybody has those. I'm sure that like uh, you and Juliana have those too. In oh yeah, Transcona. What? Transcona would be the name of Winnipeg's Mount Pearl. Oh. Although it's, like, it's basically part of Winnipeg at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really funny and sort of awful that, like, St. John's is surrounding Mount Pearl at this point, too. Like, it's just, like, eating it up. Yeah, it's... <laughs> this may be an outsider's perspective, but they seem like they're practically the same thing at this point. <laughs> There was a long time when people called them the Twin Cities. Hmm. Yeah. And I don't, I haven't heard that in a very long time. Um, but yeah. No, there were also a couple of points in history where, like, parts of Mount Pearl were going to wind up going to St. John's as well. Mm -hmm. I didn't read up a lot on it, but I recently went out to, uh, the Center for Newfoundland Studies and was flipping through some articles and saw a lot of stuff about it. It's like, ooh, don't like that. <laughs> like, as someone who is very much Mount Pearl, it's like, oh, don't like that. No. Yeah. <laughs> now Mount Pearl should take over St. John's so then we can finally get some snow clearage. Yeah. I don't care yeah, who I takes can... over who as long as I can get a Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. If Mount Pearl gets the first big Taco Bell in Newfoundland, then it's history and we can put it in the museum. Is it communications history? Doesn't matter. Mount Pearl history. True. That's fair. That is part of the mandate. Mount Pearl history. Communications, if they're on Skip the Dishes, I guess. <laughs> Communication, because of how everyone just shouts various exciting noises by going to Taco Bell. <laughs> Everyone tweeting about it? Yeah. I miss Taco Bell. Yeah, me too. Um, but we do have Mary Browns. That is true, and Mary Browns is fantastic. Tim and I were actually talking the other day. I believe it was uh, probably yesterday, maybe. I love Mary Browns so much. And we were talking about putting Mary the Brown's chicken. We we we've decided to put Mary Brown's chicken on Taco Bell food. 
Um, hmm. Isn't that like in places where there are Taco Bells? There's some places that are like KFC Taco Bells. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they're like the, yeah. the combo. Yeah. Um, there are Mary Browns in like I know there's there are a few in Winnipeg now. Yeah. And a friend of ours uh, was telling us how good it was, not knowing that it was originally a Newfoundland <laughs> uh, company. So that's funny. It's funny to be able to say, "Hey, that's that's ours." <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, when I visited my brother in Nova Scotia, um, we took my grandmother and we got Mary Browns because she wanted Mary Browns, even though. We were just visiting Nova Scotia and there's like, we were in the valley too. So like so many nice, beautiful things to like do and eat and see. And we got Mary Browns. Um, and then anywhere that we took my grandmother, she would see if there was fish and chips. And then it wouldn't be cod. And she'd be like, not cod. I'm not having it. <laughs> so. I will say the, the fish yeah. and chips that I've had here um, are by far the best. That's good. That's good to hear. Um, but yeah. Anyway. Tim yelling at me in Minecraft chat. <laughs> Didn't want to cut off the conversation, but also you always beat me to the weather clear, and it's really frustrating. You beat me to it a few times. I wish that we actually had that. <laughs> Just open up a command prompt and <laughs> clear the weather. Yeah, that'd be nice. Also, that cannot be good for the environment. Like, no. that cannot be good. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. It's Isn't that what Cloudy like... with a Chance of Meatballs is about? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anybody know what the French title for that movie is? Oh, I... <sighs> I can't remember. I can't remember I've either. I've seen it. I know it's hilarious, but I can't remember what it is. It's Raining Hamburgers. <laughs> there we go. I wish it would rain hamburgers. But also <laughs> don't, because I don't want to eat them off the ground. And then the French version of Home Alone is uh, Mom, I Missed the Plane. <laughs> so literal. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jaws. Jaws in French is Teeth of the Sea. Interesting. Hmm. Kind of poetic, actually. <laughs> I used to know a lot of these from like when I worked at HMB and I was just like receiving or like looking at DVDs all day every day. And I used to just have like a collection in my brain of like, Movie titles that were incredibly Yeah. <laughs> I know we've moved past it, but now I really want Mary Browns. <laughs> we all go for Mary Browns after this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe first day back. Oh, please. Yeah. Um, so we only have a few minutes left. Um, I'm going to say again... We're the Admiralty House Communications Museum Twitch stream. Thank you for tuning in. Um, as you can see, we've made quite a bit of progress. This really looks like a building now. Um, this is the HM Wireless Station, uh, which was built during the First World, just First World War, um, as a Naval Reservist base um, and top secret communications base. Um, it was built in Mount Pearl because it has a similar elevation to Signal Hill. And it's far enough from the ocean where you can't really see the towers. As you can see, the big giant towers. Towers are almost as tall as the Statue of Liberty. It's very tall. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's top secret. It was out here. And now it's a museum. So it's a designated historic, or I guess like heritage site in Mount Pearl. And this year is our 25th anniversary as a museum been many things before it was a museum um and yeah there's a second building to this base as well but that part does not exist currently any longer um and maybe we'll build it if we can find enough photos but we'll see we're mostly recreating this from um an old map of the place um and old photos um to you know see what the vibe is like in there when it's when it was built yeah here i can cool. uh i can pull up the blueprints that we're working from mm -hmm. 
Oh, wait. So the exactly. blueprints are right here. Oh. Yay, there we go. Yeah, so that's what we're building this structure based on. Um, and maybe we'll find something like this for the other structure. We'll see. We will see. And then, of course, here's just a cool photo, aerial aerial photo of the whole thing. Well, not aerial. They were taking these well, yeah. tiny towers. As aerial as they could get at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the people working at the station were just like maniacs, and they were climbing the towers, which is wild. I would pee my pants. <laughs> <laughs> like, absolutely. I would not be able to do that. No, that's... 300 feet in the air no thanks yeah and i like climbing like i like to climb i go climbing but no <laughs> um yeah last week we were talking about like the tallest buildings in the world compared to these um and these would have been like the biggest thing anybody in newfoundland had ever like ever seen at the time you know, and if they only had been to Newfoundland. Yeah. <laughs> so tall. Yeah. Oh my god. I would, I would jump off, but I know video games can make people very motion sick. <laughs> <laughs> I think for the 25th anniversary, we should celebrate by putting the towers back up. And, and Tim has to climb them. I've done w worse things. Tim, why, <laughs> why did you put a snow golem up here? So fun. You better, oh, no, not, you better not punch him off. I'm gonna punch him! Don't you do it. <laughs> push him off. No! <laughs> Leave him! Leave him! You already brought him into this cursed existence. Why would you, <laughs> why would you do it just to... <laughs> push him off 305 feet. Also, I just noticed in the chat, Tardy Kate just noticed. Not the snow <laughs> like, Is that like a hairstyle? Oh boy, that is a hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tim, you're this snow golem's mother. You can't kill it. Um, I feel like that sounds like a challenge now. <laughs> Uh, oh, I tried to push it. It did not work. <laughs> this is this is awful. I can't even. I also mentioned that I work as a babysitter in my spare time. <laughs> not out. Not after this gets published. <laughs> Cancelled. Save him with a boat. I was looking for slime blocks. There we go. Can you, can you put a snow golem in a boat? Wee! Sorry, I should have probably given a warning. Yeah, I can't put him in a boat. Oh, is that to catch him? Yeah, yeah. If he if Aww. he falls, it should it should cushion him. Hopefully. Nice. All right, he's coming. <laughs> Hold ready? on. Are you I ready, kids? I don't. I don't think that the folks who were working at the HM Wireless Station who were climbing these towers had slime to fall into. Are you ready? Um, yeah. as, as ready as I can, I'm going to put some on top of this tree, too, because there's... Oh, he's coming! Oh, he's coming! Ah! <laughs> oh, that's amazing! I saved him! I can't believe you were going to kill him. <laughs> it worked! <laughs> that's amazing! <laughs> the day is saved thanks to slime blocks <laughs> yeah I'm actually amazed that there weren't more casualties at the museum from falling off of the towers after climbing up them right like amazed well, I mean like the titanic he had bounced so high he bounced so much he bounced very high yes pretty guy just think of like big things like the Titanic. It had like six or eight casualties in the making, didn't it? 
Yeah. And then you have like three ginormous towers and they're like, yeah, no, everyone turned out fine. <laughs> I'm going to give him a name. Glad now he can go and be free in the wild. Are you freeing him or are you attaching him to a thing? I gave him a name. Oh, oh boy, he lived. <laughs> Um, so it's 8 o'clock, and I think we're finished our roof, and we're just doing some experiments to see if, what it was like to fall from the towers, if you fell from the towers. Um, and had slime to save you. <laughs> um, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Um, we really appreciate it, uh, especially while we're closed to the public. It's really nice to have people uh, come on and, and see us uh, do this and get to talk about the museum, because... We love it. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much. Uh, and I think we can probably stop now. <laughs> we'll good. be streaming again. We'll be streaming again next week. Um, and we'll either try to figure out the other building or we'll start the Sprung Greenhouse, one or the other. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Make good choices.